What's up, nerds? I'm just kidding, I love you guys. Now, as you could probably tell by my next level marketing genius clickbait title, we're making hard seltzer. Let's do it. Now, especially the last few years, hard seltzer has become the alcoholic beverage of choice for many casual drinkers. Folks that are more health conscious maybe don't wanna risk the carbs and calories that come hand in hand with drinking beer, but would like to sip on something during those barbecues or afternoon hangouts or pool parties, whatever. Everybody just wants to sip something. I mean, it's carbonated water with alcohol content. What could possibly go wrong? That being said, we're gonna make some here in my garage. Now you may have in the past heard the terminology spiked seltzer being used more often than the phrase hard seltzer. There's actually a good reason for this. The word spiked indicates that it is made sort of like a cocktail, that you have a seltzer water that you are adding spirits to in order to get the alcohol content of the final product. Now the reason that terminology was changed is because that's actually no longer done in most cases. Hard seltzer, like beer, actually undergoes a fermentation process to get its alcohol content. Now there are some folks who are making seltzer still by spiking seltzer water. And I will say, especially on a home level, that is by and large the easiest way to do it. Just get yourself some seltzer water, add a little bit of vodka. You can look up the amounts on the internet, I'm sure. And boom, you have spiked seltzer water. So I, that's, we don't with that shit. Today I am here to share with you guys the methodology involved in fermenting your own hard seltzer. That being said, this is somewhere in the 50-50 space between a showcase video and a how-to video, so I'm going to give you some gentle instructions, but know that most of the work has actually been done for me by a website called brewchatter.com, and I will explain what I mean more about that a little bit later. But before going any further, I wanna run you guys through the complicated list of ingredients that are gonna be necessary for this process. Now, I'll run through these quickly, but I will also, as always, put the ingredients up on the screen for you in case you miss them, but uh, the main ingredients of this are going to be water and sugar. And that's it. The actual liquid solution that is going into my fermenter to be fermented by the yeast is just sugar water. So I have here four and a quarter or four pounds and four ounces of table sugar. And when I say table sugar, I mean just this, pure cane sugar. You can get this stuff at the grocery store. You do not need any kind of special brewing sugar or anything for this. Really, you can use other kinds of sugar, but the two that I would recommend sticking with for hard seltzer specifically are gonna be just pure white cane sugar or uh, dextrose, which is corn sugar. Now, apart from the sugar, I also have water. This is five gallons of reverse osmosis purified water. This water has no mineral content at all. Uh, this is available just about everywhere. You see those water machines outside of grocery stores, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's available to me for about 35 cents a gallon. Um, I am going to put about half of this in this five gallon kettle that I've got here. And I'm going to bring again about two and a half gallons of this water up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'm going to dissolve the sugar into the solution. And then it's gonna go into the fermenter along with the other half of the water, which I'm going to cool during that process. Now in an effort to emphasize again, how easy and simple this can be, um, I am not gonna use my expensive 50,000 BTU propane burner that I use for brewing beer. Uh, instead, I'm using my Coleman camp stove. Uh, this thing's adorable, but also very handy if you like camping. It runs on these tiny one pound propane cylinders so I don't have to get my big ass tank. Not only that, but this is readily available to just about anyone. So take our water, which is heavier than hell in case you didn't guess. Feel free to have a taste if you would prefer. Okay, so I've got roughly half, roughly two and a half gallons in my kettle. The rest I'm leaving in my water bottle to be added to the solution later. So we'll put that aside. Go ahead and crank up the burner. We'll let this water heat up quickly as possible. Now, what I'm going to do, I apologize if that burner is noisy, I promise it will not be this whole video. I have here a thermometer. I'm gonna go ahead and clip this to the side of the kettle and monitor the temperature of the water. Now again, I'm gonna heat that up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, while my water is heating up, I'm gonna do two things. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about the water, the yeast, and the nutrients. Now, those of you who have made hard seltzer at home or are brewers and know about this process know um, it's not quite as simple as I'm making it seem, but it can be, and I'll tell you what I mean by that. Simply put, it's not quite as simple as just dissolving some sugar in water and then dumping any old pack of yeast in there and it'll get the job done. Um, there's a little bit more to it in terms of both pH and nutrients. Now, yeast is picky. It needs to be in certain conditions for it to thrive and produce alcohol that you want. Now, there's two issues with this when making a seltzer, for example, with a, just a straight water and sugar base as opposed to making a beer. When you're making a beer, you have lots of nutrients for the yeast to consume that come from the malted barley. This 
with sugar has no nutrients at all. Now yeast not only needs certain environments and sugar, but also needs nutrients in order to thrive and not get super stressed out and not produce things that you don't want and also to stay active. So you might've guessed it. Uh, the simple way around this is just to add the nutrients that you will need. I'm not gonna get too much into the chemical side of things because again, a website called brewchatter.com has made this very easy. Um, they have provided me with this hard seltzer yeast kit this is awesome. This is a super good idea. Uh, one of these packs is good for a five and a half gallon batch. This not only has the yeast that I'm going to need to do the actual fermentation, but this also has the nutrients that the yeast is going to need to actually undergo and complete that fermentation in totality. That being said, the other issue with the environment that the yeast needs to thrive in is pH. Um, because again, there's no pH buffer that comes from the malted barley, uh, we have to make sure that the pH of this does not drop too low during fermentation, which it will if I did not modify it in some way. So this pack also includes some pH buffers, some chemicals that I can add that you would normally add as water additions uh, to buffer the pH so that I'm going to keep it within the range that the yeast is going to operate happily at. So I will link this in the description. Of course, I do recommend if you're doing this hard seltzer thing to pick up this pack, this is like the easiest way to do it. There's also pre-made kits uh, on brewchatter.com. And it's worth noting that this is not a sponsored video, but it could be. No, but in all seriousness, I will link this in the description below uh, along with everything else that I'm using except for the sugar because just go to the grocery store. Now, another thing that I'm using from Brew Chatter is this clarifying kit. Uh, these chemicals that they actually have here are relatively common, especially in terms of fining wine. Now, by fining, I mean clarifying. I want everything to drop out of suspension so that the seltzer is nice and clear and bright. And uh, it's very important, especially with the seltzer, because it's not like beer, where even if beer has a slight haze, it still will look good. Um, if a seltzer has a slight haze, it, it, it's gonna look a little weird. And especially if it's not perfectly colorless, it can look nasty. It can be kind of brownish tinged, sometimes a little yellowy. It doesn't look super appetizing. So we're gonna be using uh, their super clear fining kit. And uh, this is Kaidosan and Kaiselsol or Kieselsol. I always forget how that's pronounced, but it's a two-step system. Should really help everything drop out of the solution and leave me with a nice, fresh and clean tasting product by which I can add the flavorings that I want to be in it. And speaking of the flavorings, I wanna showcase those just real quick. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, you have heard me talk about the Brewer's Best natural flavorings for beer and wine. These are awesome. Uh, they are good in concentration. So what that means is I can use a little bit of these in a big batch like this and still get good flavor from them. This particular seltzer is gonna be strawberry watermelon flavored. And what I'm gonna do is when the product has actually undergone fermentation, it's undergone clarifying, and it's ready to be carbonated, I'm going to add a little bit of each the strawberry and the watermelon flavorings a little bit at a time until I achieve that perfect balance. This is my personal preference. Of course, if you're doing this on your own, you can add however much or little fruit flavoring you want, or you can have no fruit flavoring at all. It's totally up to you. If you're some type of weirdo that just drinks flavorless carbonated water. So at this point, while the water's heating up, just pour yourself a drink, sit back, relax, really just enjoy your life. And I mean, that goes for every day too, not just the day in which you're brewing a uh, hard seltzer. I don't know that I would call this brewing, to be honest with you. This is like, in terms of difficulty, this right here, making a hard seltzer base and heating up your Chef Boyardee slash making a bowl of cereal. About the same. The good news is if you're watching this video and it's called something about hard seltzer and not guy burns his garage down, then chances are things went really well. All right, so my water is about 180 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna go ahead and kill my burner here. So I'm gonna be careful while doing this, of course, because simply put, this water's hot. You can actually dissolve sugar in room temperature water, but it takes a lot longer. Uh, I did it this way just to make things a little more quick. Feel free to enjoy the spoils. Mm. Now the next step is I need to get this cool enough to pitch the yeast into it so that I can undergo fermentation. I now have my sugar water solution in my fermenter. I only spilled a little bit, which is fine. We're gonna go ahead and top it off now with the remaining two and a half or so gallons of water. We've equalized it right about 75 degrees. I really think that's gonna be fine uh, for what I'm doing here. Now at this point, I have my fermenter here full with about 
five and a quarter gallons of my sugar water solution and it's time for me to pitch in the packet of yeast nutrient as well as the water modifiers that we have here. And I'm just gonna dump the entire packet in there. Now I'm going to top this off with my airlock filled with sanitizer as well as a bung that has also been sanitized. And that's pretty much it. I mean, this is gonna go into my fermentation chamber, which is my closet, which you'll never see, don't even try. The next time you see me, I'll be drinking a finished hard seltzer. It'll be the best damn hard seltzer you ever tried, I'll tell you that, I'll tell you that much. I don't know why I'm yelling at you, uh, this feels, look, I'll see you in a minute. For you, it'll be a minute. For me, it's gonna be like probably 10 or 12 days. But anyways, see you then. Welcome back. Been wondering where you've been. So here we are now 12 days later and uh, don't don't mind my ugly keg, okay? Don't, just don't look at it if it bothers you. I bought a used keg a long time ago. And I just never cleaned it up. I could take the stickers off. And say, it's got character, okay? Shut up. In this keg, we have five gallons of a finished seltzer uh, that is beautifully clear. And though only mere seconds pass by for you, let me explain what happened since we last spoke. After pitching the yeast and all the nutrients into the seltzer, I let it ferment for about seven days. And after that seven days, I took my final gravity reading and found it to be at 0.997 gravity points. Now with my original gravity of 1037 or 1.037, this gives me 5.25% alcohol by volume, depending on the equation that you're using. It doesn't matter so much. And uh, for those of you who don't have the tools to measure gravity, Really, I would just say go with four and a half pounds of sugar should get you about five and a half percent. Moving forward with the fermentation process, after those seven days of fermentation, I took the entire fermenter and I put it in the fridge behind me to do what is called a cold crash. Cold crash is a very simple concept. It's uh, cooling down the solution to just above freezing, in my case, 36 degrees Fahrenheit. After fermentation was done, um, this solution, my finished seltzer that was uncarbonated and unflavored, um, it, it had a stable haze. I mean, a very specific milky white kind of consistency. I have a metaphor for this, but I'm not gonna use it because you know what it is, because this is the internet. It was sort of a milky off white color. And we don't want that, nobody wants to drink that. So um, the next step was going to be clarifying this and making it clear and colorless. After 24 hours in the fridge, I went ahead and performed the first step in the clarifying process. If you remember, I am using a super clear fining kit, which includes two chemicals. Uh, one is gonna be Kaisalsol, and the other is going to be Kaidosan. The Kaisalsol comes up first, so I added the entire packet's contents straight into the fermenter after 24 hours of being cold. I waited 48 hours after that for it to do its thing, and then I added the packet of Kaidosan. Kaisalsol is a negatively charged solution, whereas Kaidosan is positively charged. Um, when you add those to the, the hazy beverage, we'll call it, the negatively charged Kaisalsol is going to attract positively charged ions in the solution, and it's gonna pull them down and coagulate them and help drop them out of the solution. Whereas Kaidosan is gonna do the opposite. You know, it's positively charged, so it's gonna grab negatively charged ions and pull them down with it on its way out, leaving you with a clear beverage. Now, I've never used this stuff specifically, but holy God, it works. Basically three days or 72 hours later, and I was left with a bright crystal clear solution. It was beautiful to look at. Let's go ahead and pour a little bit out so you guys can see what it looks like. So there it is in all of its clear glory. After I returned one day, 24 hours after adding my Kaido sand to a clear product, I went ahead and racked it from my fermenter into my five gallon keg. Now once the finished and cleared seltzer was in my keg, um, I burst carbonated this using a quick carbonation method. And the way I did it was I set my keg uh, pressure with the gas attached to 45 PSI and just left it for 24 hours. I wanted a highly carbonated, effervescent, almost uh, soda-like or seltzer-like beverage, and that's what I got. So again, 45 PSI for about 24 hours got me just about the perfect amount of carbonation. But before carbonating it, I did one final step, which was I CO2 scrubbed the solution. CO2 scrubbing is very simple. I connected my gas to the outpost. If you know the anatomy of a keg, you know that there is a metal line that goes from the outpost all the way down to the bottom of the keg to suck the liquid out. Um, I attached my gas line and forced gas into that tube and up through the bottom and allowed the CO2 to bubble up from the bottom to the top of the solution. What this does, uh, CO2 scrubbing, hence the name, is as the CO2 bubbles up through the solution, it scrubs out volatile compounds. Now this can be some yeast byproducts, there can be sulfur products in there that get scrubbed out. CO2 scrubbing is a great way to drive off some of those unwanted chemicals and uh, aromas. That being said, the next step, uh, we have our finished carbonated seltzer. Um, 
Let's flavor it up. I have my fruit flavorings and uh oh, what is this? I have a small bottle of red food coloring. Some of you are gonna disagree with this. I want mine to have a little pink tinge to it because it's strawberry watermelon flavor. I want it to look sort of strawberry watermelon-y. Um, you may disagree with that. You may say, leave it clear, um, but I'd like it to reflect the flavor that it has. That's just me. That's a personal opinion thing. It's totally subjective. You could leave yours clear if you want, or you can go to the store and buy a f***ing white claw. That is clear. I don't know. Drink that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a half an ounce of each and I'm going to mix them in this cup. And uh, we are going to add that solution to the keg. I do expect to use quite a bit more flavoring, but I'm going to do this in, in very small steps, half an ounce at a time of each until I get what I want, because once you are past the point of no return and the flavors are too strong, you cannot go back. There's no way to remove the flavoring from these beverages. Even carbon filtration or CO2 scrubbing, I don't think would quite get you there. Plus it's just extra work. So why not just go slow? This is amazing. That might be the best hard seltzer I've ever had. I, I freaking like it, dude, I do. So, okay, we ended up using um, I believe two and a half ounces of the watermelon extract. I'll have to watch the video back and make sure. Maybe even three and a half ounces of it. But, and then four ounces of strawberry. Um, that's way more than I thought we were gonna use. And I do mean way more. But this is why you, you add a little, taste it, add a little more, taste it until it's where you want. Now that it tastes like I want it to, um, we're gonna make this look like we want it to. I don't know, man. It's very, very subtle. It's just ever so slightly pink. I don't hate it though. Let's get a side-by-side -side comparison though to see how these look. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call it quits here. This is this is a good hard seltzer. I think it's pretty. I think it has good flavors going on. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it's been at least a little bit informative to you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them below. This is a relatively simple process. Again, as I've hopefully showcased here, there's even simpler ways to do this, but I'm very stoked with how this came out, being my first hard seltzer that I've ever made. Again, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Where's my towel? I wanna to throw it at you again. I think it's a cool transition. What do you think?